Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect, all right, the remnant, all right, which starts with the 144,000, all right, who under Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all right, will be the governors and rulers of the next world to come, which is the kingdom of heaven, okay? And that fulfills the tabernacle of David being established on the earth, all right? Also, you have the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on, all right? And this is a narrative that has been suppressed, hidden, okay, and trumped upon, all right, through lies being spread by the powers that be. But as the scriptures say in the book of Second Edges, the sixth chapter, and around the 28th verse, all right, corruption would be overcome, and the truth that had been so long hidden would be declared. All right, and what is that truth? The truth is that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the true biblical Israelites, the people, all right, that are currently calling themselves the Jews, all right, saying that they're a fulfillment of biblical prophecy of the Jews returning unto that land. That's not true, all right. And Christianity, as a stronghold that has been, you know, forced upon many, many nations, especially us, the Israelites, all right, it's now being destroyed. All right, as the scriptures say, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. All right, bringing the minds of the elect to the obedience of Yahweh Bashim Shai. And I'm doing this video in response uh, to this video done by the other apostle Ramlab, and it's titled, Oh Really? All right, and um, he's responding to this video. 10 Things to Know Before Engaging Hebrew Israelites by Cam Triggs. And in this video, this guy is going through 10 steps. You know, he's promoting all of these books and, you know, basically spewing the same rhetoric and uh, madness that we uh, have come to hear these Christians speak. Now, in this, he did say some things that were true. All right. Um, for example, that we're not saved by the law. You see, and we're not saved by the law, and we teach that. Although you do have particular Israelite camps boast, all right, in a law, and a law saying a law will save us. Well, the law won't save us, all right, but to teach a doctrine that we don't have to keep the laws and to condemn a people, all right, for keeping the laws is absolutely wicked. When you look at all of the problems that has destroyed our people, okay, you can clearly see that. It's because they broke the laws, all right? Health, you know, the spiritual confusion, all of these things, the idols that they bow to, everything that they're into is sin, which is transgression of the law. So as we have awakened in these latter days, we do push and teach our people to keep the laws, all right? But Christians hate the law, all right? Now, there's also another video done by the elder apostle Tahar, this one is called Christianity is Dead. He's responding to that. Um, he also did a video earlier. Esau is losing sleep over the One West Doctrine. Okay. And uh, that's response to this video. Done by Signs and Wonders. In which um, salvation black Hebrew Israelites debunked. All right. So, um, you know, just like Elijah... <laughs> we're getting ready to go head to head with the prophets of Baal because when we first you know started going out on the highways and the byways you know when we woke up you know our elders and apostles before us it was a common thing for Christians to come up you know and you know debate you know engage but you know after a while they left us to hell alone all right but in these last you know five years you know, 
they've got a little courage, you know, after seeing us on fire for this word, okay, you know, uh, being spread throughout the four corners of the earth, which is prophecy, you know. Now everybody wants to talk about the Bible. They want to talk about Esau. Now, these are things that Christians never talked about. You know, they never went into the volume of the book. They never went into prophecy, which is how they were able to control the narrative. But thanks be to Yahweh Bashim Shai in the latter days, the spirit of truth has entered into the minds of his servants. And we're standing on our feet as a great army because none of these people, all right, uh, took part in any process to heal us. So now that we've been healed by the Holy Spirit, everybody has something to say. Now, mind you, there's gay churches. There's all types of uh, wickedness going on uh, amongst Christianity. And they never address the filth. They're not even addressing the filth that is being spread by the powers that be, you know, attacking manhood, attacking, you know, uh, women, womanhood, you know, which are things that go against the scriptures. You'll never see these people stand up to those agendas, all right? But they'll do all that they can for some reason to come after the Israelites. Now, why is that? Because they're in great fear, as the scriptures say, okay? Because when you read Revelation, the 11th chapter, and you read all throughout the scriptures, it speaks about how the Israelites will return from a dead state, you see? And when we were in that dead state, Okay, we were being fed all sorts of lies. We looked to all of these various different, you know, hills and mountains, which are governments and things of this world for salvation. And we weren't fed. We were we, we were continuously destroyed. Drugs, you know, gang uh, culture, rap, you know, culture and how that was infiltrated, you know, to destroy us. You know, our women were weaponized family structure broken everything's went completely wrong and the answers are in the holy scriptures man and they don't want you to have answers via the holy scriptures they want you to remain in that dead state okay none of these people are coming together saying we got to stop the uh filth the the, the the drugs being put into their communities we got to stop all of this gang thing we got to you know teach them to stop doing all of these things that are destructive to them. No, they're coming together to tell our people to stop, all right, uh, uh, you know, coming to the understanding that they're Israelites. I just got a, you know, a word, and it's confirmed that Vocab Malone is working, okay, or was hired or contacted by the NFL, all right, to deal with a plague of particular jakes, will waken up in the NFL to the fact that they're Israelites. So he's going, or he was called to go and speak to particular people who deal with the players, all right, to try to uh, uproot what is happening. And what's happening is you're being met, all right, with the brazen wall. As a matter of fact, let's get that, and we'll get uh, right back to here. See, you're not going to stop this truth. All right. This is Jeremiah 15 and 20. And I will make thee unto this people. As a matter of fact, let's see if we can uh, pull it all the way up. Yeah, I'll start here at 20. It says, um, and I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall. Okay. Protected via the Holy Spirit, via the angels. And they shall fight against thee. And that's what's happening. Everybody's fighting against us, but they shall not prevail against thee. All right? What did the Lord tell Peter? The gates of hell will not prevail. And the gates of hell are getting ready to come. All right? It's getting ready to be a bigger narrative. You have people working behind the scenes, like I just talked about Vocab Malone. He's, he's behind the scenes wiggling around. Okay, wiggling its tail, <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they're trying to figure out a way to demonize, plot, and to stop this word from going out, all right? But this, gird, this word is going to go out until Yahweh Bashim Yahushai wants it to stop, all right? Because the scriptures say, as we'll get in Matthew the 24th chapter, 
this gospel would have to be preached throughout the four corners of the earth. Then the end would come. And Christianity has been preached throughout the four corners of the earth uh, uh, seven times. <laughs> and when I say seven, that's complete. It's been, you know, forced. Okay, it's it's been a, uh, uh, it's it's brought a perpetual bruise, you know, not only on the people, but on the earth. All right now, if you take hold to the Holy Scriptures and you're going to, say that this is you know the the you know the way of life well why isn't that way being pushed okay throughout the four corners of the earth why is all of this wickedness being uplifted okay why is the president able to just put his hand on the bible and swear in and then as soon as he gets in push propaganda and in and, and ideologies and you know, decrees that go against what the Bible say. Why? Because there's they're a bunch of goddamn liars. These people are not about the truth of the Bible. They're about forwarding Edomite supremacy, which is being tarnished. There's a stain in it. See, and it all starts with this word going out. So they're going to fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Okay. And of course, this is speaking to now. All right. With the situation that we're in as we're out prophesying. All right. Now we're speaking for that time as well. But things all right, uh, that are written in the scriptures must be read in spirit. And see, that's what we've come to bring, the spirit of this book. All right, which the scriptures say, the spirit of truth would not be received by the whole world. See, now in Revelation 11 and 8, it speaks of how the Israelites, their bodies would lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Okay, and that's directly tied to the dry bones in Ezekiel the 37 chapter. Now, as you read down, it's saying they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, okay, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And that's speaking of, you know, around 1619 to around the 70s, you know, pretty much in around the 60s, 70s, the Lord put that spirit back on our people. And then you had a man by the name of Abba Bivens, who at the time where everyone was teaching the Torah, he preached the understanding of the New Testament in Yahawashai. And from that point, the hearts of the children were turned back to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers were turned back to the children. All right. And the elect are being sealed. And that's what it's all about, the elect. And we'll get into that in just a minute. All right. Now, um, You know, these people at the end of the day are a part of, you know, the generations that rejoiced at our downfall. These are the children of those who benefited off of what we're reading about here. Because when you read it, it says in verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And the two prophets are symbolic, ultimately, of the northern and southern kingdom. Okay, it's well known and documented, even in our scriptures, that when we were in our right minds, okay, the heathen were not able to forward their idols, okay? And when David, okay, had all 12 tribes together, and the, uh, the heathen were subdued, okay? The heathen were subdued, and ultimately, uh, we took them down. They all remember and know that history. That's why they could not wait for the day that we fell. Okay. Now, give me one second here. Now, it says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And that's what you see happening. And they stood up on their feet and great fear fell up on them which saw them. So you're witnessing that great fear. This is a part of that great fear, all right, of them which saw them. Now, this could be an Israelite, but what, what is he doing? He's fighting for the agenda of the Edomites, all right, because you have paid agents who have always, 
did whatever they could do to help the heathen to forward their agenda. But you're seeing that great fear fall upon our enemies. Okay, and when the enemy is in fear, all right, what does he do? He starts to play unfair. He starts to lie. But it's going to start also with what we've been seeing, these agendas, these videos, to try to debunk what we're teaching. Now, in this video, this guy is speaking upon salvation. Now, I'm not going to play the video. You can go ahead and check that out if you would like to. But I'm just going to get into a bit of the topic of salvation, you know, because... You know, as we've been uh, preaching, okay, as we've stood on our feet via the Holy Spirit. See, this awakening that you see happening all throughout the four corners of the earth, it can be explained via the Bible. Everything that's happening on the earth can be explained via the Bible. But what these people want to do is to overthrow prophecy and establish their own thing, okay, and it's not working. It's not working. The end is clearly near via this gospel being preached. Okay? Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Which they try to detach the true Israelites from having anything to do with salvation. Now, when we say that salvation is only for the Israelites, you have to understand what that means. Okay, salvation only being for the Israelites means the covenants. All right, you had the first covenant written on, on stone and you have the second covenant. All right, which now we're under a grace period to be brought into that covenant. It's for the Israelites in which those laws will be written on their inward part. What we're saying is that no heathen will partake in that blessing. Now the heathen will be on the earth. The heathen will be in the kingdom. Okay, but the scriptures gives you their role. All right, they will suffer for a period of a thousand years. They'll build. Okay, and uh, the biblical Edomites are, you know, of of the heathen nations, the only ones who won't be forwarded after that. But after that, you know, the Edomites will be destroyed. This is all scriptural. All right, we're not just making this up. See, you have to go into prophecy, and that's what Christianity has been able to do for years is undermine prophecy and, and, and pretty much start a doctrine based in the book of Matthew. You start in Matthew and you go forward and thinking you can understand the Bible. No, you have to go through the whole volume of the book. And they've pushed this narrative that, you know, the Old Testament is done away with. No, the Old Covenant is done away with. You see? But there's a new covenant and that new covenant is for the house of Israel, as we'll get into, okay? Now, as this gospel is being preached, it's leading to the end. And the end is associated with the gathering of the elect, okay? Now, this is Revelation, the seventh chapter, okay? And this is where we get our doctrine. It says, when we open up the videos, what do we say? Peace and salutations to the elect, Okay, the 144,000 in a large multitude. That is explained in, 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 in uh, this chapter. You see, we go by the book. You all go by your own vain opinions and imaginations, which is why this guy, which I, I don't know what nationality he is, but uh, which he, he, he's an insider at the end of the day. He's went to all of these schools. He got all of these different you know, uh, degrees and theology and this and that. So he's indoctrinated. All right. They go by a, they don't go by the spirit. They go by what they're taught in these particular seminary schools. Okay. Which ultimately downplays what the heavenly father is going to do. And you notice none of them deal with the throne of David. See that none of them deal with the throne of David real quick. Luke, uh, Luke, the first chapter, as we always bring these things out, it's nothing new. Okay, Luke, the first chapter. And then as we do this, what, what will they do? They'll tell you, well, uh, here we go with the Hebrew hot scotch. What the scriptures say line upon line and precept upon precept. But here it is. You're able to promote all of these damn books. Okay, and say from the beginning, the dude said in this video, you know, from the beginning, 
you know, God had a plan for all humanity and this and this and that. When the Lord from the beginning is dealing with a chosen nation, it started with Adam, okay, through Abel, through Seth. And when you follow the narrative, if there's a chosen people, you know, Noah, Shem, our facts had on down ultimately to Abraham, man, who had Isaac, who had Jacob. It's dealing with a particular seed, and there was a promise given into that seed. Okay? Now, when it's all said and done, all nations will benefit from the kingdom of heaven being established under the Messiah, but no nation will have the same blessing as that chosen nation, that chosen seed. You see? And that's the Israelites under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And what is he going to establish? The throne and tabernacle of David. You see? Luke 1 and 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, which we, we, we've been dealing with that recently as well, another false doctrine they teach. All right? Yahweh Shai calls himself the son of man. Okay? He is of the loins and lineage of David through his father Joseph. Okay? And bring forth the son and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. Okay, because we know he didn't have a Greek name. Okay, and the J didn't exist then. These are the, these are all things that the Holy Spirit has been placed upon us to bring out, starting with our teachers. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. See. These Christians ain't dealing with this. They do not want to focus on the tabernacle of David because when you focus on the tabernacle of David, what you have to admit is that it excludes all nations. See, the, 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 the very purpose of the tabernacle of David being rebuilt, all right, is that Jerusalem be established, okay, as a sovereign power in the earth and that the earth be ran okay under the authority of the messiah and the 144 and all israel will be righteous and the the law statutes and commandments will be the standard in the earth you see these people are not attacking the people who are in jerusalem saying they're the jews all right but they are attacking us why is that because they ultimately are forwarding the system of edomite supremacy you see, and they do it under this pretense of love. Meanwhile, the people who are ruling the earth are not showing anybody love. Where's the love? Where's all this damn love that you people are talking about? You see, you don't see it. Now, dealing with salvation, as we were getting, you know, ultimately, I'm not going to read this chapter. We've We've read it all before, but... It's telling you ultimately the gospel would have to be preached. All right. The destruction would not come until the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai were sealed. Right? And it's the 144,000 out of the tribes of Israel, man. The tribes of the, the children of Israel. You see it right here. You see? Christians don't bring these things out. Vocab said this isn't a literal talking about. This is not literally talking about the children of Israel. You see, all things are possible through the spirit of who they say is Jesus Christ until a nigga teaches the Bible in their eyes. Because within the system of Edom Edomite supremacy, nothing you say holds any weight because of who you are. And they're going to fight for that, that uh, uh, ideology to remain. Now you have the 144,000 and then you have the large multitude of all of the nations and kindreds and tongues because why? Israel was scattered amongst all of the nations which is another narrative they ignore. You see, you cannot take the focus off of the Most High's people when reading the Bible. Okay? And I always say, so you're telling me the Lord is only going to save 144,000 Israelites and then a large multitude of heathen? No. This is speaking of Israelites of all nations, kindreds, and people and tongues. And when you look up this word kindreds, okay, when you look up this word kindreds, as we always bring out, it's fula. Okay, fula. All right. A fule 
In the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. See? And prophecy kills all of this madness, man. And you have to understand prophecy in order to understand what the New Testament or the New Covenant is all about. Okay? Because a, a, a testament is just an agreement. Okay? Who, who were the agreements and the laws and all of these various different things that we read about in the scriptures given to? Now, as pertaining to salvation, let's get real quick, get a few scriptures. And we may later, you know, go through some of those, what they're saying and, you know, pause it and, you know, but ultimately we already know what they're saying, you know. Matthew 24, okay, and it talks about what's coming, you know, tribulation coming unto the earth. And we see those tribulations formulating in the earth right now. This is all prophecy. What's happening in the earth is all prophecy. All of these, you know, uh, uh, laws that Biden are passing, you can go into the, the, the scriptures, the, the spiritual Sodom in Egypt. You know, the, the Yahweh Shah himself said his return would be likened unto the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So we, we can clearly look at what's happening in the earth and how they're rebelling against order. They're rebelling against manhood. They're rebelling against what a woman should be. Implementing all of these ideologies and doctrines in the name of freedom and love. So we can clearly say, oh, this is what he meant by wickedness would uh, forward itself in the latter days. And you can see that there's no love in these streets. But after this, what does it say? And then, verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, okay? And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, okay? He ain't coming back to save all of the people on the earth, man. As a matter of fact, it tells you in Revelation, the 19th chapter, that when he returns... He's coming to smite the nations with a sword, okay? Revelation 19 and 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, okay? That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. So when the Lord comes back, he's coming back to conquer and take down these heathen nations, and that's spoken of in Daniel, that's spoken of in, in, in various prophecies, you see? And those whom overcome, which were chosen from the foundation of the earth, will be joint heirs, as spoken in Revelation, the second chapters, to rule with that rod of iron as well. That's the authority that's coming to the earth. The Lord is not coming back to gather everybody of all of the heathen and all of this and that and set up a rainbow coalition, No. He's coming to set up the throne of David, man, which the throne and tabernacle of David deals with authority. You see, all 12 tribes, okay, on one accord with the law, statutes, and commandments written in them, teaching you heathen how to live. Now, it says, and the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, all right, of heaven, with power and great glory. You see that? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. Okay? Now, real quick, we were just in Revelation the eleventh chapter. Let's read that again. It says, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together as elect from the four winds from one end of heaven unto another. Okay? And that's directly tied to the destruction of Babylon the Great, which Christians are not identifying what Babylon the Great is. Christians are basically doing their own thing. All right? And the Heavenly Father in these latter days has raised up his prophets to just tell the truth. Okay? Now, I was, as we were just reading, you know, after three days and a half, you know, after this great fall where these heathen got rich, mocked us, laughed at us, okay, made all of this money off of us, off of our ignorance, you see, after that we would wake up, right, and great fear would fall on them which saw us, but what would happen after that? And they, who? 
The they are those whom the spirit of life entered into, heard a voice from heaven saying, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. You see, this is speaking about the Israelites, man. And we're going to prove it. So salvation ultimately is fulfilled in this. Now, what ha what is this fulfilled? This is where we will be brought unto that second covenant. You see, it said he's going to gather together his elect. His elect. Let's look up the word elect in the Greek. His elect, electos, okay, which is the remnant of Israel. We can go into various scriptures to prove that. See? See, they don't want to talk about how you're going to have particular men hiding in the rocks. All right? You're going to have those who are not going to repent for their thefts, their murders. How we're going to go into those rocks and gather, get all of those people out, purge out the rebel. They don't want to talk about prophecy they want to continue in their madness. Oh, oh, and oh, yeah, buy this book, buy that book. Scriptures, the, the book, see, they, they, they try so far to get hard to get away from the narrative of the Bible by promoting their books. We're reading the book. Okay? That's all we need. Now, electos, picked out, chosen by God to obtain salvation through Hamashiach. It says Christians, which Christians are ultimately the Israelites who were called Christians first in Antioch. Those were Israelites, you see, but the, the ultimately they're followers of the Messiah. You had those who didn't follow the Messiah of Israel and you had those who did. Point blank period. And those who are his followers, okay, who, who received him as their way back to the father, Okay, outside of the temple in that first covenant. All right, they were granted ultimately to become the sons of God. All right, now, elect, it says, uh, select of the best of its class, excellence, preeminent, apply to certain individual Christians. Now, who are the Christians? The Christians are those who followed Yahawashai, which were Israelites. Point blank, period, man. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get Isaiah, the 45th chapter. We'll start at four and then we'll jump down. It says, for Jacob, my servant's sake, in Israel, my elect. So he's going to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. All right, because the, his elect was scattered. All right, and became heathen like, but in the in the latter days a remnant of them will return. It's very it's very simple when you apply prophecy. You see? But when you're trying to interject all of these these uh you know Edomite supremacy and because Edomites ain't trying to save no goddamn body. <laughs> Never have. So why should we listen to you? We understand plantation Christianity was 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 given unto us to keep us in a docile state. And look at the people who are still following it of our nation. They're through. They don't have any rulership mentality. They're not calling for the kingdom of heaven. They want this world to forward. They want to pay taxes for the rest of their lives. They want to get loans and things for the rest of their life. Well, no, we plan on giving out the loans. We plan on receiving tribute. And see, that type of mindset is dangerous to the current powers that be. You see, because they thrive off of you being in a, in a, in a beat down state. But prophecy is on our side. See, Esau is the end of this world, but Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. So for, for Jacob, my servant, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by name, I have surnamed thee, all right? Though thou hast not known me. And now in these latter days, we're coming back to the understanding and we know now, okay, this is this is what we're supposed to be, you know, this is our husband. This is what, what name we're called by. This is how we should act. 
and we you find out black culture is death. They want to keep you black. They want to keep you in all of these dumbed down cultures that ain't producing any fruit. But the minute you call yourself an Israelite, they put together three hour videos, ten the, the, the ten things to do, 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 you know. To hell with these heathen, man. They don't give a damn about you, Israelites, man. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved salvation in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Israel shall be saved. Salvation is for the Israelites. Now the heathen will be there. You see? The heathen will be there. All right? But they will not be on the same playing field or level. They will not have the blessing that the children of Israel would have, man. Isaiah 65 and 9. I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell therein, man. Now, let's get Daniel. The second chapter. Daniel, the second chapter. And, and we're just going to basic prophecies. I mean, we can do some more, much more, but you just keep it basic. You know, it's, these people ain't that goddamn important. At the end of the day, they're losing. They're on the back foot. See, we're moving forward with the jab, and the jab is prophecy. But see, that right hand is going to come and crush all of you people, man. Daniel chapter 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. You see? But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. What kingdoms? You have four beasts in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. Okay? And the final beast would be the fourth one. Okay, and a little horn that issue forth from it. The Heavenly Father is coming to consume these kingdoms. You see, this kingdom is going to consume these kingdoms and it shall stand forever and it's not going to be left to other people. It is for the saints. See, it is for the saints. And this is the good news that we are preaching unto our people. You see? And they're taking, you know, the remnant is, they're taking rest in that. You would rather them rest in lies, man. Daniel 7, okay, and 25, and he shall speak great words. Who's the he? The Edomite against the Most High. All of these damn lies, man. Blasphemed everything and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and to think to change times and laws. And you can see that happening. And they shall be given unto his hand unto a time and time and dividing of times. After the, What does the scripture say? After three days and a half, the spirit of life would enter into them. See, in that time, that 350, we didn't have no understanding of who we were. We were just being oppressed, beaten, destroyed. We had no understanding of why. See, we were being fed lies being fed a diet that was contrary to what we what the Lord wants us to do. You see? And nobody had a problem with that. But now, you wake up from that dead state. You put off the idols. You put off the wickedness. And everybody got a... Now they got an attitude. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume it and destroy it until the end. So... There is a, a, a kingdom in <laughs> the kingdoms that be that are going to be taken down when Yahweh Shai returns. So how in the hell can salvation be for everyone? These are just basic prophecies, man. Now, as we were reading, the Israelites are going to be called up. Okay, as, as uh, Habakkuk describes it. In what? The chariot of salvation. Let's get that real quick. Scripture said, as birds flying, so shall the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. He said he's going to send his angels to gather his elect from the four quarters of the earth. 
See that? Habakkuk chapter 3 and 8. Now Habakkuk is seeing a vision of what's going to happen, man. You see? When the Lord returns, it's going to be total chaos on the earth, man. So as he's seeing this vision, he's, he's asking his question, was Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Because of the vibration of those chariots and what's going to happen when the Lord returns, is going to be the earth is going to be in disarray. Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Horses represent power. Chariots of salvation. The vehicles of salvation are those chariots. What we are saying is that only the Israelites are going to get beamed up into those chariots. That's the fulfillment of salvation. And there we will be changed. Okay, we will receive new bodies. Okay, we will the 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 we, we will be ushered into that second covenant, which is the laws written on our inward part, man. As a matter of fact, this is First uh, Corinthians fifteen. Let's start at uh, fifty one. Behold, I show you a mystery: we shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. See that? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. All right? For the trumpet shall sound. Now, we just read that in Matthew 24, where he's going to send his angels, and they're going to shout out. A, and, 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 and what are they going to say? Come up hither. Okay? <laughs> he's going to gather his elect. At the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. But this corruptible must put on incorruption. We're going to get those new bodies. Okay? And this mortal must put on immortality. Now, they laugh when we bring this stuff out. But this is what the very Bible is talking about. Oh, they're going to have new bodies. Oh, they're going to do that. Oh, they laugh at everything, right? Because ultimately, they're trying to... They're just trying to stick to that script of Edomite supremacy, which nothing you say has validation unless they say it's true. But hey, we have the Holy Spirit now. We don't need you. We, we, the scriptures say the remnant would no longer stay up on him that smote them. So we don't need your opinion. We, don't, we're, we no longer look to you to be validated. And that's the problem. That's what you're used to. And you're hurt. That's why Vocab Malone is trying to deal with the NFL to keep players from, from coming to this understanding. Well, it's too late. You already got brothers who came out of the NFL, and they're leading camps. You already got brothers who, who, who were in the NFL and, and in it that, that listen, that watch. There's nothing you can do. And a lot of them in the coming times, as you get crazier and crazier with your laws, are gonna, they're going to walk away. Watch. From these sports. You Edomites are getting ready to lose, man, at the end of the day. It's only going to get worse for you. Now, you're boasting and talking as if you're in control and proud, but really you're worried. And we're not afraid of you. See, as long as we stick to the Holy Spirit and continue doing what the Heavenly Father has called us to do, you lose. First John 3 and 1, be, b behold, what manner of love have, have the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. So, of course, they ain't going to get down with what the Bible really is talking about. They can only get down with the Bible when it promotes madness and, 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 and is used to promote all these lies. And like the elder Ariala said, not everybody should have the Bible. Only the elect, all right, the teachers, all right, who have the new song should have this Bible. You see? But now everybody got it. But that was prophecy. The Lord wanted it to be like this. See, he wanted all these opinions. He wanted all of this to happen for the purpose of showing his power through a low, all right, base men. All right, that afflicted and poor people who would trust in his name in the latter days, man. Remember themselves. There's so many prophecies we can go into. 
All right. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. All right. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And he's in a glorified heavenly body right now on the right hand side of the most high. And we are going to have those very same bodies. No heathen will have that body. No heathen will be beamed up and changed. You see that? This is what they're trying to say. Everybody can be changed. Everybody's going to have the law, statutes, and commandments written in them. Everybody's going to have a spiritual body. No. When we say the heathen can't make it, we're not saying that they're, they're going to just disappear. No, they're still going to be there. All right? But they will not be there in the role and capacity, all right, in the authority that the Israelites have Starting with Yahweh Shai and the 144,000, man, with the 12 being at the, the head of that, okay? And who's, who's the, 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 the head of the church, all right? Who's that rock that the Lord's going to build his house upon? David, man, Peter, okay? And you can't understand this book without understanding reincarnation. You can't understand this book without going into prophecy. You cannot understand this book without understanding Genesis 1 and 1, which most Christians don't understand that. But they have the audacity to sit here with a 10-point ten, uh, ten presentation on what to do if you encounter the Israelites. Now, it says we're going to be changed, man. We're going to put on immortality. All right, verse 54, 1 Corinthians uh, 15. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, which can be found in Isaiah, the 25th chapter in the eighth verse, showing you as speaking of Israelites. Isaiah was quoted here by Paul. Oh, death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So what has destroyed us? Sin. So what is the Heavenly Father going to do? He's going to bring us into a new covenant to where sin will no longer have dominion over us. And that is only for the Israelites. Hebrews 8. All right. I'll start at 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Okay, for if that first covenant have been faultless, then should have been no place sought for the second. So if the first covenant was faultless, if we got it right, what would happen? If we didn't break the laws, what would happen according to the Bible? If the Israelites didn't sin, what would happen? Let's read what would happen. We're just going to read the very first uh, verse, man. Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, all right, Yahweh thy God will set thee on high above all nations on the earth. That's what had happened. That's what would have happened if the Israelites, all right, kept to that first covenant. But they didn't. So that's why there was a need for a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Because we couldn't get to that perfection with this flesh. See, so the Lord gave us a grace period, all right, where we're not judged, per se, by the law. But that doesn't give you the go-ahead to just break all the laws and live a beast-like life. No. But that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother time. For if that first covenant had been faultless, and he's quoting Jeremiah 31, then should no place have been sought for the second for finding fault with them. Who? Israel. He's talking about the Israelites, man. I mean, clearly, this whole chapter is speaking of the Israelites. 
for finding fault with them. He said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. No matter how many times we bring this out to Christians, they won't take heed. They'll act like this isn't written. So they're, they're ultimately, they're delusional, man. Proud. And they're, hurt. They're, they're watching these videos and being cut. But see, there's a spirit in them to be against us. So you're getting ready to see the prophets of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai meet head to head with the prophets of Baal. And we're mocking your gods. See, from this sacrifice, fire is coming down. And you, you all are going to be found to be liars. You're already found to be liars. But it's only going to get worse for you as prophecy comes to pass. Now, yeah, you're going to have your narrative. You're going to come after us. You're going to, you know, demonize us. You see? But what you're saying ain't true. What we're saying is true. And that's what we're getting ready to find out. That Baal and his prophets were never the truth. But Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, through the prophets that sent, he sent, were true. So he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, which are all 12 tribes, which fulfill the tabernacle of David. That is the last time we had a government through David and Solomon, who forwarded his father's throne for 40 years. That was a prelude to what was coming. And no heathen were on the level of the Israelites, even in that time. You see, but Solomon fell. You see, that was David's throne. That wasn't a throne that every nation had joint rulership. But no, 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 no. You all try to take away from the Bible and you end up making yourselves look like a damn fool promoting your books. Okay, and this guy, he's hurt. Signs and wonders. See, the, the sign and wonder is the fact that the Israelites are out there preaching and all of these prophecies are coming to pass but everything that you all are doing is to undermine that like what we're doing has nothing to do with prophecy we're just a bunch of bug outs but that's all right and you got jake listening to these people you see well if these people were put in the position that they had you know that their forefathers had they would enslave your ass within the blink of an eye man let them get some of that elite money these Edomites are just hurt man at the end of the day it says not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not said the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be unto me a people. See? And they shall not teach every man his neighbor for every man his, or every man his brother saying, Know the Lord for all shall know me. All who? All of Israel. See? All of Israel, man. So... Where you heathen will have to be taught. No Israelite will have to ever be taught again. But the heathen will have to be taught. How do we know? Micah, the fourth chapter. Okay, uh, 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 Zechariah, the 14th chapter, when you go down. How do you know they're going to have to keep the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles? So if all nations could be brought into this covenant, who in the hell will we teach? All nations being brought together fulfills the throne and tabernacle of David? No. That's why you don't see these Christians link the tabernacle of David to the kingdom of heaven. See, they're trying to undermine that. This is what they're trying to do. And I'm going to get out of here in a minute. Hey, the Davidic kingdom, man. <laughs> Hey, uh, Jeremiah 33 and 14. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And in those days and at that time, I will cause the branch, okay, which uh, born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth. Nazareth means branch. That branch of righteousness to grow unto David and shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. 
In those days, Judah shall be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherein she shall be called. All right, because it's the bribe of the, the heavenly father. The Lord, our righteousness. The laws are going to be written in us. We will be his people and he will be our God. He will dwell in us. You see? Now, verse 17, for thus said the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit up on the throne of the house of Israel. All right, and that, that's going to ultimately be Yahawashai, man. Now, let's look this up in the NLT. It says, for this, because sometimes cause someone asks, why do, you, why do you deviate from the King James? You know, as the Apostle Ramla was breaking down, or I believe it was the Apostle Tahar, you know, that used to be back, in, you know, when they were coming up, you know, you had to stick to the King James. But, you know, now that we've, you know, grown in the spirit, you know, you have the Geneva Bible. You have different translations that you can go to as long as you know where they go off. Because even the King James has flaws. You see? Now, to get better understanding of what how the Old English is uh, written... You go. You can go to the NLT. It says, "For this is what the Lord says: David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever." And who is that? That's Shahawashai. But when you go down, I'll just read this. Consider this, verse twenty-four. Consider is thou not what this people have spoken, saying, "The two families which the Lord have chosen, He have cast them off." Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more nation before them. Go to Psalms 83, and you can see that happening now. They want to cut off Israel, the true Israelites. Because if they truly had a problem with people saying that their you know salvation is for them and that they're the Israelites, why why wouldn't why would they jump over the, the, the 1948ers? Why not deal with them? They've actually set up shop, put people to death, started wars over that land. We're merely prophesying it. We're merely prophesying we're gonna be brought back to the land. Actual lives are being lost over that ideology of 1948, right? And if you don't know what happened in 1948, you know, that's, you know, when the so-called state of Israel was established. All right. Which that, even that wording shows you that that's not the throne of David. Okay. If there were, if the throne of David was truly established, there would not be any Christianity or any Islam. All right. Uh, uh, coinciding. They have major flaws, man. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day nor night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and my servant David, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity return and will have mercy on them. And they don't want that. And when we have mercy... Okay, he's going to beam us up, change us, enter into that new covenant. Okay, and this is what's going to happen. We'll end it off here. Revelation 15 and 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High, which entails the destruction of Babylon, the, 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 the destruction of the beast system. See? which that's when he's going to send those angels that, you know, Yahweh Shai, they come up hither, and we're going to get beamed up out of here. See, these Christians want to associate that to the rapture and try to add everybody else and all of this other madness. We're showing you what it's talking about. And we ain't even, we, this, this is basically the same scriptures that we always bring out. You know how many much more scriptures we can go into? And we don't have to sell a book. This is the book. We're reading out of the book. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Because we're going to be looking down. It's going to be transparent. We're going to get beamed up chains. And we're going to be looking down at the destruction of Babylon the Great. Okay? And the disarray and the hell that's going to happen on the earth. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And remember, we ain't going to have this vision. We ain't going to have these bodies. We're going to be changed. Death will no longer have to be on that chariot. You have to have a new body. So how in the hell did he then go get up there? 
Salvation starts when you're beamed up to that chariot and changed. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark. Well, who's the beast? Who's, what's his image? What's his mark? You see, Christians don't talk about none of this stuff. Well, the, the mark of the beast is sin. But then you say we don't have to keep the laws. See, now Christians got to talk about Esau. They got to try to talk about the mark. They got to try to talk about these things, and they're making a damn fool of themselves. And over the number of his name, and that's what we're going to have victory over, victory over the beast, his image, and his mark. That's salvation, man. And over the number of his name, that 666 chai side stigma, which is him ultimately try to implement his science and, and, and wisdom as the standard wisdom in the earth, and via his technology, destroy the true wisdom and make it to be forgotten and get inside the DNA and, and, and manipulate man's thoughts and everything to get a birthright. But no, no. <laughs> and we're going to have the harps of God in our hand. And what are we going to be singing? And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, in the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, the Lord God Almighty, and just and true are his ways. Now, if we're going to be singing the song of Moses, if we're going to be singing the song of Moses, how can everybody be saved when the song of Moses was, was, was glorifying a victory and deliverance from Pharaoh and the Egyptians, man? Exodus 15 and 1, then Moses sang in the children of Israel of this song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he, he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. And who's the horse and his rider? And this time Esau, the red horse who took peace from the earth, man. The Lord is my strength. This is the song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God. He was stable singing, man. <laughs> and I will prepare him a habitation, all right, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of the war. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts have he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are drowned in the sea, and it's going to be a sea of fire. See? But the elites as it's written, are going to be hiding, man. You see? So this is the song of Moses, and we're going to sing that song when we get on those chariots. Guess who else is mentioned as they kept singing? The dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them, and the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. All right? The same nations that David rejoiced in having down, man. Moab, Okay, uh, uh, Edom and the Philistines, the same nations. But anyway, Lord willing, more to come. Just wanted to get warmed up, you know, and uh, ultimately get into some, uh, just get into the scriptures, man. You know, if you watch our videos, you know, we pretty much, we're a broken record, man. All right, but we're going to keep singing that song, okay, until, hey, nonstop, until they drop, all right, so. At the end of the day, Lord will, maybe we'll come back, you know, and I'm pretty sure other brothers are going to get into it as well. Maybe we'll come back and listen to them and, you know, pause and stop. But three hours and 25 minutes to debunk the black Hebrew Israelites. And I and the, the various other apostles and elders in an hour or less debunk your dumb ass. Sit your dumb ass down. <laughs>